Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial, Dusty here. Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use Google Classroom as both a, a teacher and a student. So I'll have timestamps in the description below uh, to kind of take you to where you need to go to answer your questions. Now, if you are a teacher, uh, this is a complete free resource from Google. Now, obviously, they're always updating. There are always things that you may say to yourself, well, I wish they had this feature or that. They're continually updating all of their tools and whatnot, and so understand this is, again, a work in progress. So it may not be perfect, but I think it could help you uh, run online classes and do things that you may need to do to be able to teach your classroom from home. Uh, and so the first thing you got to know is you need to have a Gmail or a Google account. These are absolutely free, a Gmail account. You can forward that email address to your you know, school or .edu email address, just so you know. Uh, but you need to have a, a Gmail, like I said, account or Google account in order to start an actual course or a class within Google Classroom. So go ahead and log into that and then go to classroom.google.com. Once you're there, it's going to ask you to log in or verify your Google account. I've already done that. And once you log in, you're going to be taken to this home page here. So you're not going to have any classes here as a student or as a teacher. So what we need to do is go to the addition symbol in the upper right hand corner. So if we click the addition symbol here, you can see we have two options. We can join a class as a student or we can create a class as a teacher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join a class first because I've already uh, over here, I already have uh, under my classes here, I already have my teacher account here set up with my test class to show you how to do all of that. But in order to join a class, you've got to have a password. So as a teacher, once you create a class, you're going to have a class code. Once you log in, whenever you go to a specific course or class, it will have an individualized class code. If we select that code and copy that code, now anytime any student of yours logs into Google Classroom, they can click the addition symbol, go to join class, go ahead and paste in that code from that class that you sent them via email, text, however you're communicating, and click the blue join button. Once doing that, it'll load up everything that you have for them on that class. As you can see here, test 101 coursework is ready to go. Now I'm looking at the same thing here as all of the other students will. So the only thing you're going to need as an instructor is going to be that code to send to your students. Now that's going to be provided to you very easily. If we go to our classes tab here, you can see I have one class created here. In order to create a class, you again click the additional symbol here in the upper right hand corner, then you go to create class, okay? Using classroom at a school with students? If so, your school must sign up for a free G Suite for Education account before you can use classroom. Now, any school asking you to utilize this tool will have already done this. If they haven't, I don't know what they're doing, but if they haven't, you can click on that link there, uh, Spark Learning with G Suite, sign up for G Suite. Again, your educators, the people you're working for should have already done that. Just say, I've read and understand that. Uh, basically, is letting Google decide which establishments are allowed to use this service. So click this, you've read that, go to continue, and then you're going to be able to create your class. It's kind of neat, actually. Uh, and so whatever your class name is, you can do your name. You can do, you know, Miss Johnson 101 or uh, Mr. Smith 203, whatever you want to do. We're going to name this one English 202. Uh, section, again, if there's a section, if you're a middle or high school teacher, maybe you put that there. Uh, subject, obviously, is going to be, let's say, uh, AP. Uh, no, let's say English 9 for this one. Uh, and then room. Uh, you, you don't really have a room, so you can put your house here. I, I don't know. I'm just kidding. Uh, put whatever room you want to put there. I'm going to go ahead and just put 1000 just to make it simple. You want to fill all of these out. You may want to ask your principal or someone in administration what they want you to put here uh, just so it's kind of uniform with the entire school or you know educational establishment. And then once you're ready, click the blue create button there and your first classroom, virtual classroom, has now been created. Now, once you create your classroom, you're obviously not going to have a single student in that classroom. You're only going to be able to see the name, the 101, which is the information we just put in, and then you're going to see your class code. Here is our class code. If we select that, right click, or Command or Control C, copy that code, send that out to your students via email, via a Facebook page, via however you are communicating with your students at this time, you can get them this code any way you want to. Now, 
I'm not going to focus too much here on the, uh, I guess you would say the customization of Google Classroom because there is a lot of customization options. You can go here and select a theme. You can upload a photo for your cover photo. I can click the down arrow. I can even change all of this information if I'd like. But I can go to select theme here and I can see here, is this going to be an English and history class? If so, I can select that tab here. Maybe I want this theme. Select that theme. Again, maybe this is something you do in your downtime, but you're a teacher. You don't have downtime. All right, so now that we've created our course, we have our class code and ID, let's take a look at some of the things that we can do to get you started. I will preface and I will give a disclaimer. I am in no way a teacher or an educator. My wife teaches third grade, but me personally, I am just a technology educator on the internet. Hopefully this video and my other videos can help you get to a place to where you can communicate and work from home and teach your kids what they need to know from the comfort of your own home. Okay, so with that being said, here we are. We've got our course. We've got the four tabs up here. We have stream, classwork, people, and grades. All right, if we go to our other class, so if we go to the, class, the course that I've already created here, Test 101, we can see under people, I have three students here. These are just other email addresses that I've added in that I own currently, uh, and so that's kind of what these are here. You can individually communicate with each student beautifully from within Google Classroom by going to the people tab, selecting the dot there and email student. Very, very simple. You can organize them by last or first name. Again, they've got a lot of the simple stuff that would make it easier for you, okay? Do you wanna add a teacher? Do you have a co-teacher? You select the addition symbol here under the people tab, type in their name or email and give it to them. Now remember, they need, you cannot send this to an email that is not a part of the G Suite for educators that we talked about earlier. That has to be done by your establishment. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that now. Go back to the stream. Now the stream, think of this as kind of like social media. All of us are familiar with Facebook and Twitter and things like that. This stream is going to be the stream of information or data that's coming through your classroom. Okay. At the top, you can share something like an announcement to your class. So if we go here and I'll cancel this, if we select this, share something with the class, we can select which class. If we have multiple courses that we're teaching, we can select both classes. If say we're sick or we've got an appointment coming up and we're not going to be available, you can choose both classes there, or you can individualize students. So I can actually go here and just select individual students that I may want to communicate with and this will only show up on their stream. So I'm going to uncheck that right now. So what are we going to share with our class? Well, type something here that you may want to share with them. So say, uh, don't forget the assignment due this coming Wednesday. So as you can see there, I've typed up, don't forget assignment due this Wednesday at 12 o'clock. You can even add files if you have a worksheet or a PDF that goes along with that select thing that you're trying to get them to do or remind them about. You can add that by going here, selecting it from your Google Drive, a link from your school's website, a file or a YouTube video. Do you have, oh, hey guys, there's a video showing you how to use Google Classroom. Let me show you where it's at and then you share them this video that you're watching right now. That would be so kind, I would appreciate that. Uh, but with all of that being said, you can add all of that there and then when you're ready to go, go ahead and select the students or classes you want to send it out to. And then if you click the drop down arrow, you can even schedule this to go out at a later date or a later time. So say Monday, you know, you got a busy week ahead of you. You know, you're going to want to communicate with your students Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You can have posts scheduled out to go 8 a.m. every single morning or Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We can click schedule. This will go out, select your date, select your time, hit schedule, and you are good to go. But let's say we want to post it right now. Click the post button right there and boom, you're good to go. Now, once you've done this, okay, if I go to a student page, so now I'm logged in as a student. If I refresh the page here, we can see, all right, now the teacher has put something here. Don't forget assignment due this Wednesday at 12 o'clock. I can add a comment, okay? So I can say, thanks for the reminder, okay? Thanks for the reminder and then boom, I can go ahead and select this button here and it will respond to my teacher. And if I go back over to my teacher account and refresh, you can see, oh, okay, well, they have responded. Thanks for the reminder. That's beautiful. Within these comments, we can go here. We can click the three dots. We can delete it if the student said something out of line or they shouldn't have said, or we can mute that student because they're being an absolute brat, right? Uh, and, and then other things that we can do, we can click the arrow here and we can respond, respond directly to that student. So if we respond here, click the respond arrow, and then that will respond directly to that student's concern concern or comment uh, that was made on our initial response there. All right, so that's kind of a little bit about the stream and what you're going to see here. If you're a student in this upcoming section here to the left, you will see upcoming assignments and things that are due and we're about to get into assignments and quizzes and things like that. All right, here we go. How do we create classwork? How do we create things that need to be graded or things that need to be sent out to our students? Very simply. 
The tab next to stream, which we've been here for this entire video so far, is classwork, second tab. Click on, click on the classwork tab there, and then once you're there, you can see I already have an example assignment, 1001, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create an assignment. If we click the create tab in the upper version of the screen there, we're going to have assignment, quiz assignment, a question, material, or a reuse post, or a topic. Now, a lot of what you are going to be doing are for online purposes are probably going to be topics. But we're going to go ahead and start with a quiz assignment first, and then we'll go to a topic. They're all fairly simple, okay? Uh, and all of this is done within Google's ecosystem. So we're using Google Forms, we're using all of these things. Uh, so let students know how their assignment will be evaluated. Got it. So now, again, what I told you at the beginning of this video, I'm not a teacher, so I may misuse educational terms. If that is the case, please let me know in the comment section below, and I will do my best to rectify that in the comments. Um, and so right here, we're going to give our quiz a name. So I've named my quiz, Quiz 202. I want them to finish the entire quiz. And then I want to go ahead and create this quiz. Over to the right, uh, this is going to, to tell me what class it's for. So again, this is the class that I want it for. I want all students to have to take this test. I'm going to be grading this test on a what point scale, a 100 you know, point scale, or I want this to be ungraded. This is just for them to complete. It's mandatory, but it's going to be ungraded. I'm going to select the 100 point scale uh, just to make it simple for the video. Uh, and then if there's a due date, so we want this to be due uh, a week from today, so uh, this coming Monday, uh, and then what we'll do is we will make this, um, you know, you don't want to make the time optional, so you can set a time here. I'm going to leave it at 11.59 p.m., and then you can choose a topic. Normally, you have to create one because there's not any pre-built topics there, and then you'll type in the topic if that's something you want to do, and then under rubric, you can click the addition symbol there. You can reuse, create, or import from Sheets. Probably you're going to have to create if you're new to Google uh, Classroom. Uh, and then here we can type in the criterion uh, title, the, cri uh, the criterion description, as well as how many points and how the level, uh, title, and description. Now, those of you who are in education, you know all about this. So this shouldn't be very hard for you. When you want to create your rubric, you'll come in here, you'll do this. I'm sure there are templates online from other teachers who will show you exactly how to walk yourself through this. I'm going to X out of this because I'm not even going to play a teacher on TV. All right. So I'm going to discard that there. Now we have our blank quiz right here. It's going to be done within Google Forms. If we go here, now is where we create our form within Google Forms. And just so conveniently enough for you, I have a Google Forms full tutorial and I will link that in the description of this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here and create an actual virtual quiz. So I'm going to do that for the next minute or two and then show you what that looks like, okay? So we have our questions here, uh, and then we have the type of question that it is. Uh, we type in what the question is here in the title or the description, and then we go to the drop-down menu here, and we have a bunch of different options of what type of question this may be. Is it a short answer? Is it a paragraph? More of an essay answer? Multiple choice? Do you want the multiple choice to be checkboxes? Do you want them to have drop-downs? Do you want to upload a file? Is it there an image required, uh, like a math problem or equation? or something of that nature. Linear scale, multiple choice grid, or checkbox grid, okay? All of these are options here. You will need to tinker around with them and, until you get the actual quiz you want. But we're gonna go and go with a short answer. This is our question one here. And then the other things you're going to want to know is, is this question required? If this is a quiz, they're all probably required. So go ahead and check that there to make that question required. Click the three dots here. If you ever see three dots in a Google piece of software like this, that normally means you have more options. So if we click this here, we can give it a description or a response validation. You can do that if that's something that you may want. Uh, and then this gives them basically where they can go here and type in a short answer right here, okay? Uh, right here, we have an option to add another question. So what we're gonna want to do is um, basically when you wanna add a new question, you will hit the duplicate option here. Basically, if you have another question similar to the one you just created. If you wanna delete a question, very simple. Click on the the um, the trash can there, and it is completely gone. Uh, over here, we will see an add question button. We will see an import questions from previous quizzes. We will see an add title and description, if that's something you want to do. Think of this as building blocks. So once we add a new question down below here, if we click the little um, the box at the top of these questions, we can drag them wherever we want them. So don't worry about the order initially. Click and hold right here, drag that to where you want it to be, and you can move these questions all around once you're done, okay? We can add an image, we can add a video, and then we can add add specific sections within a question. I'm not going to go over too much more here within the Google Forms. I have a whole tutorial showing you how to do that. But once you get your quiz completed here, we have the title and description. Uh, you'll be able to look at these responses directly here. You'll go to responses. It'll show you who's responded and who has not. And then we'll click the send button in the upper right-hand corner. It'll give you an email or a, a link to copy and, and, and do all of that. We're not actually going to be doing that right now. Uh, and then once you're done with your question, as long as this up here says all change are saved,
saved in Drive, you can close out of this quiz. And then if we go here and actually refresh this here, we will see now that this quiz is under a draft mode, which means that it has not been published to the class yet for the students to take part in. Uh, so if we click on the three dots and we go to edit once more, we are back here. If you want to assign this quiz, you have to go back to Google Classroom. In the upper right hand corner, you will see a button that says assign. Click assign. It'll say students will see this assignment in their streams immediately. Click assign. And now, once it's published, if we go back to our student account here, click refresh, we're going to see that the teacher posted a new assignment, quiz 202. I can go to this here. I can go ahead and see, oh, there's the blank quiz. Click on that. And then if I click on the blank blank quiz, I can see now, oh, there's the multiple choice you know, question that we created. There is the short answer question that we created. Once we answer, click submit, you are good to go. That's how you do a quiz. Now, if you want to do a topic, you just hit create here under classwork, go to topic, just like we normally would, and then whatever your topic is going to be. Uh, and so let's say our topic for this is going to be, so we will create a topic about writing and then click add. Once we've done that, our topic will be created. Uh, and so there's a couple of things that we can do here. We have our uh, writing topic, which is here. This is our title here. And then what we're going to do is we can see once we have our all topics here, then we have the topic that we just created, no lessons posted yet. So this is kind of like folders for specific different things. We could have writing, we could have reading, we could have uh, whatever you want to have here and then click the three dots here and then we can rename, delete or copy the link if that's something that we want to do. Uh, so now that we have writing, students can only see topics with published post. So now you're going to want to put post within your topics. So make sure that here, once you're here in writing right here, you create posts to put within your topics so the students can see those and go to those topics and work within those individualized folders. Again, very simple, very easy to use. Now, one thing I need to tell you about is the actual left hand side here. If we click these three lines up here, we're going to be able to see everything. This is kind of like your central hub, right? You're going to be able to see your to do list, the different courses you're teaching, and you can even go to settings. I'm not going to dive too much into those now. If you have any questions about anything in particular, you can put those in the comment section below. But if we go to our classes again, we'll see our two classes that we have here. We'll go back again to this class right here uh, just to kind of give you a couple of other things that, that may need to be done within Google Classroom. Lastly, I'm going to talk about the last tab which is grades. If we click on grades here, we can see that we can actually go and see the different grades that we've given them for a specific class. So if you have graded, okay, student number one's quiz that they just took that you just created and they got an 85 out of 100, you tap that there, it will save that. And then let's say they got a 70 out of 100 on their uh, other assignment that you assigned to them, that will be saved there. Now, the beauty of this is that once you're here under the grades tab is you can go and once you've given, uh, you know, you're looking at the different students and if you've graded specific assignments for that student, you can click the three dots here where that student is and go to view submission. That will take you directly to their submission of that individual assignment. That is an easy and a wonderful thing to do. And when you're ready to confirm that, you just click the three dots. Once you've graded it, go to return, return unsubmitted assignment, click return, It'll give the student's name here, click return, they'll be notified of their grade, and you're good to go. Then it gives you their overall grade percentile right here where their name is underneath here, okay? All right, so now we're gonna go back to stream, give you a couple other pointers. Remember, this is completely free from Google for you to use for your students. You're going to need a classroom code to copy and paste and give to your students to make sure that those students know how to join your class. I showed you how to do that at the beginning of this video. In closing, if you have any other further questions about the tech side of how to do any of this, please put those in the comment section below. If I don't get to them, if I can't answer those, other teachers, other people who've watched this video may be able to. Thank you guys for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.